gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert Sports Show. New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor present G1 Supercard. Got the review here from Robert Sports Show. Alright, this card, this show, was the first show by a non-McMahon-owned company at Madison Square Garden since 1960. Great history there. They sold it out. Did Ring of Honor sell it out? Did New Japan sell it out? You kind of got to, what, what were the people's thoughts when they bought this car? Went live here. I would have went there. But, so we had kind of, we had two winner take all matches. The Ring of Honor title versus 90 of GP title. We had IWGP championship match. We had a Ring of Honor championship match. We had a British Heavyweight Championship match. We had some overall good matches. The show starts at two pre-show matches. We had the Honor Rumble, which was 31 stars of New Japan and Ring of Honor. Um, just the basic people in there to kind of get everyone on card kind of deal. <coughs> the one big surprise was the Great Muda made an appearance. Um, if you don't know who the Great Muda is, he is a older... He's kind of like the Hulk Hogan of WWE. I would guess you would say. Um, he was a you know older wrestler who Ric Flair kind of guy who was kind of reigned New, J New Japan for a long time, one of the greats in New Japan history. Um, his first US show. So it's kinda kinda neat to have a, a battle royal like this and have somebody like that be able to get in it. Um, we end up having the one who started it, Kenny King, end up getting the victory. The winner of the Honor Rumble gets a Ring of Honor title shot. So that's kind of cool to see that Kenny King is get, finally gets his uh, his due. Um, the other one was a six was a um, six a six woman tag match. Um, the team of Kasetsu, Jenny Rose, and Hakui end up winning. So yeah, on to the main card, the ten matches. They kind of pulled the WWE here. They just put a lot of stuff in this card. Um, a lot of this didn't have to happen. I actually thought the show overall was good. Um, I've talked to some other people and that didn't really care for it. Um, but so, but I didn't understand that there wasn't a lot of storylines. There was a lot of matches, you know. Um, instead of having this long, nice story and then bam, a match, we kind of had matches. Now we're going to build stories off those matches. First match we had was the Never Open Way Championship winner or champion. Will Ospreay versus the Ring of Honor TV Champion Jeff Cobb. Winner take all. So for both titles. Now like I said in my preview, I wanted Jeff Cobb to win here. I wanted Will Ospreay to lose the Never Open Way title. Because I wanted him to be part of the G1 or be part of the Super Juniors. I said, I said G1 in the preview. But I guess New Japan still recognizes him as a junior. Um, he's kind of in that transition phase. He's trying to build body mass. In order to be a heavyweight, but he's not quite there yet. That's what the Never Open Weight title's for. Uh, but uh, so Jeff Cobb ended up giving me the victory. Um, great match. Jeff Cobb is a very talented wrestler. Um, I look for big things from him. He's now a dual champion in New Japan and in Ring of Honor. Four star match. Um, so hopefully Will Ospreay will go on to the Super Junior Tournament in May and win it. Or maybe go to the G1 in June and win it. Next up, a match that just didn't need to happen. We had Roosh versus Dalton Castle. Uh, Roosh is one of the founding fathers of Los Ingrenables de Japón when he was in CMLL. Match lasted like five seconds. Um, Roosh got the victory. Um, kind of the way I'm doing things now when I rank matches. One star match, obviously. I don't do zero, I don't do negative. It's just a one. It's a lot of one star matches. Um, next up, we had the Women of Honor Championship on the line here. We had champion Maile Tani versus Kelly Klein. Um, I really thought they were going to go a different way here. Um, they ended up having, it was a good match, um, but they ended up having Kelly Klein regain, the, win the uh, Women of Honor Championship here, become a two-time champion. And the title has only been around for like a year. Um, so um, It was good though, I ended up giving it a three star. Uh, we'll see where they end up going. The beautiful people end up debuting. Here, um, Elangelina Love and Velvet Sky. Um, they had Manny Lamone, Lamon, actually end up attacking Kelly Klein. So we'll see where that dynamic goes. But um, 
you have a title change there. Three star. Next up, we had a New York street fight. We had Bully Ray versus Juice Robinson scheduled. Um, earlier in the show, we seen Juice laid out in the back. Bully comes out. Um, we're like, okay, where is this going to go? Who's going to do it? Flip ended up coming out. Flip Gordon returned. Great. He looks great. But then we had Shane Taylor and Silas Young come out and get involved. And then we had Lifeblood, Mark Haskins, and Juice Robinson come out. Juice didn't look like he didn't come out like holding his head and walking funny like he just got his cat. He came out, bright eyed, bushy tail, let's go after this. So it ended up being a six uh, person tag match, New York Street fight. Flip Gordon took some fucking kendo shots from Silas, from Shane Taylor, and from Bully Ray. Holy fuck, his back was fucked up. Um, but the team of Flip, Juice Robinson, and Mark Haskins end up getting the victory here. It was entertaining. It was just fucking booked way wrong. Bully Ray needs to go away. Um, I ended up giving it three and a half. Uh, I, I was kind of told the story, but it was just like, okay, it's not what we expected. Next up, we had a triple threat match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. We had champion Taiji Ishimori versus Dragon Lee versus Bandito. This match began with Ishimori issuing an open challenge on social media. Dragon Lee accepted. Well, Dragon Lee is coming out of AAA, Mexico. Um, Bandito represented Ring of Honor and went ahead and accepted as well. So we ended up with a triple threat match. Um, surprise, surprise, Dragon Lee ended up getting a victory. I actually gave this match four and a half. I really enjoyed this match, but... When it comes to the Lucha Libre style, the junior heavyweights, that is my style. That is the style that I like. The flippiness, I love that. Um, so yeah, this match was really, really good, I thought. Dragon Lee getting a victory. Seen some Dragon Lee in some other shows in New York, which was great as well. So ended up being a four and a half star match there. Next up, we had the IWGP Tag Team Championships versus the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Um, winner take all, four way, Evil and Sonata versus the Gorillas of Destiny, which they had to be TV champions, versus PCO and Brody King, the Villain Enterprises, which is the Ring of Honor champions, versus the Briscoes. PCO took a fucking powerbomb from basically in the ring, they powerbombed him over the fucking top rope, onto the ground. He hit, jumped up, and said, let's go. I mean, you talk about no fucking sell at all. Or it's either completely a no sell or it's completely like, I'm a badass. I think I'm fucking kill me. Here you go. He came out in an electric chair. Um, this PC PCO guy is fucking crazy. Um, but we end up having one title change hands here instead of two. We had the Gorillas of Destiny, part of Bullet Club win the Ring of Honor Tag Titles to go with their current IWGP Tag Team Titles. Um, now, Toro Yano ended up coming out and taking the IWGP Tag Titles and leaving with them. So we'll see where that ends up going. Uh, but right now, Grills of Destiny, uh, Tamaloa, Tangaloa, and Tamatong are the IWGP Tag Team Champions and the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. I ended up giving it a four star. Next up, we have the British Heavyweight title line. We have Zack Sabre Jr. versus Aromo Tanahashi. On a Rub Pro, we actually seen this as a, them as tag teams against each other. Um, it was a good match. It was a good match. Um, nice map based wrestling match. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. ended up getting a victory. I ended up giving it a four star overall. Next up, which this next match was very, to me, was predictable. It was for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. We had champion um, Taishi Naito Naito versus Kota Ibushi. There was talk of Ibushi leaving. Then we had him re-signing and not going to AEW with his best friend Kenny Omega. Then he lost the Never Over Boy title to Will Ospreay. Naito, when he carries the Intercontinental title, he just drags it around like he didn't care about it. So he kind of knew what they were going to do here. 
it still to me told a great story. It was a great match. Um, Ibushi ended up getting the victory. I ended up giving it four and a half star. So I really liked it. Um, next up, we had the Ring of Honor World Title on the line. We had a triple threat ladder match. We had Jay Lethal versus Matt Taven versus Marty Scurll. This match was kind of clunky at times. Um, I thought it was good overall. Yeah, I don't know. It just kind of it was a weird dynamic between the three of them. I'm kind of getting tired of Lethal as champion, but. I wanted Skrull to win. Matt Taven ended up winning. Matt Taven ended up having his own ladder. This like fucking 30 foot purple ladder. Um, so it's like, what the fuck? It's like a big show type ladder? Uh, but he ended up getting the victory. I mean, the crowd was into it for the most part. Um, I ended up giving it four and a quarter. So I liked the match in general. Um, I just have to wait and see what Taven does as a world champion. I know after the 17th anniversary show, the 60 minute time limit draw match he had with Lethal... I thought he was a world champion, but we're going to have to wait and see. If we get Matt Taven versus Kenny King, it's going to be kind of to see how that goes. Um, but I have no issue with Matt Taven being world champion here. It kind of builds him up. We'll see where Lethal goes as if Lethal gets the title back. Um, then the main event was the IWGP World Championship. It's Zuko Okada, winner of the New Japan Cup versus champion Jay, Le Jay White. I thought this was pretty predictable as well, and I said this in the pre my, my preview of it. Um, I thought Jay White won the title pretty quick. They gave him a little run. Let's pull Reigns back. Let's give Okada the title back. Let's let Okada run. Let's let Jay chase the title for a little bit, because Jay really didn't chase the title. It's like he went from a match with Okada at Wrestle Kingdom. Bam, he's champion. And now he lost it. So, and then a matter of four months. Um, so Kyle got the revenge of the, of the loss at Wrestle Kingdom, got the title back. Um, I can see between now and G1, or even after G1, I could see Okada losing the title back to Jay White, have Jay White get an extended second, or even a third run with the IWGP title and build him up. Um, I ended up giving the match four and a half. I thought it was really good. It did tell a pretty good story to me. Um, Okada, after losing at Wrestle Kingdom, even the announcers have said this then, this is as far as away from the title as he's ever been. So he had he had to go out and win the New Japan Cup to get a title shot. So he did that. He got this title shot. And he was able to make everything, you know, make get the title back. Uh, Gato, who's with uh, Oka uh, White in the uh, Bullet Club, was with um, Chaos and with uh, Okada. Gato actually helped Okada retain the title a ton. Uh, Jay White ended up leaving Chaos with Gato going to Bolt Club last year, late last year. So it kind of told a story, it brought that all up. Is Okada had his guy in his corner, now he's not in his corner. Okada's been on a losing streak. Okada was able to come back. I think overall, as a professional wrestler, Okada is one of the smoothest guys out there. His dropkick is, to me, one of the best out there. He does the, does the kind of delay dropkick in the corner, which is like, he's like he stops in midair and then kicks the guy. So, um, it's kind of cool to see Okada back as champion. We'll see where this goes. That's going to wrap up the New Japan Ring of Honor G1 Supercard review. As always, stay tuned to Robert Sports Show for more pro wrestling. Um, don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader. Sports Channel content.